basically what we're going to cover uh, woodpeckers questionnaire external questionnaires feature is uh, our newest um, feature that allows you to basically get outside of Word and expose your templates to the world, to whoever they need to go to. So we're going to walk through creating a questionnaire from a couple of simple um, uh, woodpecker templates. We'll adjust the questionnaire fields, maybe change some of the names, exclude them from the actual external facing questionnaire. We are going to add recipients of the questionnaire by email, so they'll actually receive an email from us. We're also going to cover the shareable link um, way of sharing your questionnaire, which allows you to say embed this questionnaire on your website via a link or put it in your own custom email or link to that shareable link in whatever way that you like, um, as opposed to sending it to people individually. And then finally, we'll walk through what it looks like actually submitting the questionnaire and then how the recipient is actually emailed their, uh, their responses, as well as the questionnaire creator is emailed the final documents as well as the responses. Okay, so uh, without further ado, let's hop right into it. Let's see. So. Um, everyone's familiar with Woodpecker, right? We're in Microsoft Word here. We've got a simple um, engagement agreement. I've launched Woodpecker over along the side here. I've just filled in some dummy data for us, but I would just want to show everyone how you actually navigate to the questionnaires. Um, so if you visit uh, the Woodpecker app, of course, in Word, and you go over to the menu here, there's a little questionnaires item now at the top of the menu with a little new badge. And if you click on it, that's actually going to open up your browser and it's going to take you to a URL called app.woodpecker.legal. So if you don't want to have to navigate to, uh, to the um, uh, Word application every time you, you know, want to launch the questionnaires, you can actually just bookmark this URL. What Woodpecker is going to ask us to do is basically create a new questionnaire. You can see that I already have an existing one that I've created called client intake, but of course I want to create another one. And in this case, what I want to do is create a questionnaire um, that sits on top of an engagement letter that I just showed you, plus let's say a certificate of incorporation. So when I click on create a questionnaire here, uh, this is actually your document collection, right? So this is uh, all of the templates that you've saved to your document collection in their various folders um, marked as shared or not shared, meaning uh, folks on your team may have saved these to the collection. Remember, the document collection is shared across your team. And this looks very similar to the interface that you see when you populate multiple documents or multiple templates at the same time from within the Word add-in um, interface uh, or the Woodpecker add-in interface. So I actually put these two, uh, these two templates in this incorporation folder. So what I'm going to say is, okay, well, I would like to generate a questionnaire based on these two templates here. Just like multi-populate, we can generate a questionnaire out of any number of templates that we want. Could be two, could be 102, doesn't matter. Um, we can also filter for them by name as well as select an entire folder. So what I'm gonna do now is I'll generate the questionnaire from these two templates. And what I'm gonna see is a couple of things here that we're gonna walk through. So if at all you ever get stuck with this, uh, you can actually click on this learn more here and it's gonna be take you to our help center with a big article uh, with videos and GIFs and all that sort of stuff detailing how to actually set this up. So don't worry if, um, if you get, get lost here. Uh, but basically we've got a couple of sections. First is the questionnaire name. Now the questionnaire name is really important not only for yourself uh, to be able to identify what this is, but this questionnaire name is also going to display to the recipient that you send this questionnaire to. So in this case, I might call this uh, incorporation, um, uh, let's call it questionnaire. Okay, and remember this name is going to be displayed to the questionnaire submitter um, once we ultimately expose it to them. We can also see that in the, under this questionnaire template section, we see the two templates that I selected that should uh, sort of underlie this questionnaire and these templates will get populated once this questionnaire is submitted. Okay, then finally we've got our questionnaire fields here. Now this is a list of all of the unique fields that exist across these two templates. Now, if these two templates had overlapping fields with the same name, we're only gonna see one, right? But if they have, uh, of course, different fields with different names, we're going to see the list of unique fields here. So what I can do though, is some of these, I might not want my recipient to actually see, or maybe I want to actually fill them out myself um, after the fact. So what I can do is I can either change the name of each of these fields or each of these questions, on my questionnaire, or I can actually exclude that, that uh, question from the questionnaire if I like. So for example, this client first name, maybe this should actually be first name, 
uh, because I don't want the client to see client. Um, we can see now here that when I change the name of the field or the question, this is, the, this is what the old field is called, right? This is what the field is called in the templates. So you never actually lose what it's actually called. And this is what the uh, recipient will actually see in the questionnaire. Okay, so let's just quickly do this for all of these client fields here with client last name. We've got street address. We've got uh, city and state. We might want to say your city and state, for example. Finally, we've got zip code and then maybe salutation. Okay, now the rest of these, this fee amount, I probably don't want my recipient to see that. So I'm actually going to exclude it from the questionnaire. So I just click on that trash can and it becomes hidden. Same thing with this test field here. I could probably leave in company name, registered agent name, and maybe the total shares of common stock though, I would like to fill in later as well as the stock price per share as well as the incorporator information. And the rest of these though, I think I could probably leave it in, right? You can imagine that this is me potentially sending this to a client for them to give me their information that will ultimately generate their certificate of incorporation. Now, once we've uh, specified which questions should show, which ones shouldn't and what they should be called, we can now come down to this questionnaire recipient section. So there's two ways, as I mentioned, to share your questionnaire. One is to actually just enter in the name uh, or the uh, email of the person that you'd like to send this questionnaire to. We can add as many recipients as we want. We could also come back later and add more if we wanted to. But what this means is when we enter someone's email, that means they're going to get an email from Woodpecker saying, hey, uh, Alex has shared a questionnaire with you. Um, click this link to go and fill it out. And we're going to see what that looks like here in just a second. The second way uh, to actually share your questionnaire is with this evergreen link or shareable link. Now, if you wanted the questionnaire to sort of be a one-time use, you typing in the recipient's email is what you would want to do because when the recipient uh, submits this questionnaire, uh, their unique secure link that they get within that email is now invalid, right? So it's a one-time use. But for example, if you wanted this questionnaire to be usable by multiple people in your team whenever they needed it, for example, or you wanted to put this on your website, or you wanted to put this in an email and have you know, every new client fill out this client intake questionnaire, you would actually want to use a link because the link um, is an evergreen link and it will always work um, regardless of how many people submit uh, the questionnaire through that link. Okay, so Let's go ahead and save this questionnaire now. And what it's gonna do is it's saying, I'm saving your questionnaire and I'm sending a link to your recipients. Um, once this is saved, we now have our new questionnaire here, right? And if I just go ahead and edit that, we're gonna see the exact same thing uh, as, as well as the recipient that I sent to, right? So basically the exact same stuff here. Now I've got my email pulled up. So if I actually go into uh, my, my email here, I can see that I have a email uh, from Woodpecker indicating that my, my questionnaire has arrived. So if I click on, uh, on this link here, uh, it's this, let's see, it's the second one. I can see that here I am basically the recipient. So um, this yearly test person is the questionnaire creator. That's the person who created the questionnaire and now shared it with uh, this other person who is uh, my other email. So in this case, when I'm looking at this, I'm basically looking at it as, uh, as a recipient of the questionnaire. So we can see the questionnaire name here. We can see who the requester was. Um, of course, it will say your name here instead of uh, your email. It'll have your name and your email. Um, and here's that secure link I was talking about. So if I click on that secure link here, you can see that there's, there's this, uh, this very uh, long secure link. Um, and now I've got this incorporation questionnaire, right? So again, this is what it looks like from the questionnaire submitter's point of view. So now if you're the submitter, you're gonna go through this and you're gonna fill out uh, you know, whatever needs to go in here. Let's just put in some, uh, some info. Maybe we do Boston. Let's do a zip code. There's my salutation. Maybe my company is Acme. Let's just say this is registered agent. Do some other uh, address info here. And finally, a zip. Now, once all this is filled out, I'm going to go ahead and click submit. And again, as the questionnaire submitter, I now see a little message that says, thanks for submitting your questionnaire. The creator of the questionnaire has been notified. Now, what I'm going to get as the questionnaire submitter, if we just refresh here for a second, is a, another email that says, I've submitted my questionnaire. Okay, so if I pop in there, um, I can see that my questionnaire results have been submitted and attached to this email is actually my responses as a CSV. 
Okay, so now uh, if we go over to the um, to the uh, questionnaire creators view, this is actually my email as uh, a questionnaire creator. So you can see that I've got an email now that says your woodpecker questionnaire has been submitted. And in the submission, I can see that, okay, well, um, my, my questionnaire incorporation questionnaire has been submitted by this submitter. And my populated documents are actually attached to this email as a zip file. And I have the responses as a CSV. So now I've basically taken the population process of filling out that engagement agreement plus the uh, certificate of incorporation and I've completely automated it and now I have both of those documents complete attached to an email as a zip folder okay so that's the the uh, simplest way that a questionnaire can ultimately be um, sent to a recipient uh, submitted by that recipient and then the recipient receives a email containing their responses and the questionnaire creator receives an email containing the recipient the uh, submitters responses as well as the final documents populated now one quick other thing here to to look at is that was the the email route that we took let's say we wanted to take the shareable link route so if i open up the same questionnaire here i can actually copy that shareable link and now if i just open that shareable link over here in my browser you can see that it's much shorter uh, and we have that same questionnaire except this time it's asking for your email address and the reason is because this shareable link is again meant to be reused many times put on your website put it in an email wherever you want to put it however you want to share it with people and the idea is that we don't necessarily know uh, who is the person filling this out just based on the link whereas sending the, uh, the uh, questionnaire to people by email, we do know who is, who is filling it out. So it just asks you for your email address here. But it's the same process as someone would fill out this questionnaire, click submit, and then they would get the responses emailed to them as well as you would get the responses and the final documents um, emailed to you uh, the same, just the same exact way.